The following is an instructional video on how to attain fish attracting voltage on your own fishing lures by installing lure charge anodes and hardware. To start with a brief demonstration for the skeptics, here's my little digital clock with the battery removed. It takes a 1.5 volt. Digital meter is set on 2 volts DC. On the positive side I've wired in a stainless steel hook on soft aluminum wire. On the negative side I'm using one of my hotter anodes. Straighten it out a little bit for this demonstration. And the electrolyte is uh, salt water taken from the Strait of Georgia. So I'm just going to touch the anode only into the water so that the only thing that is wet is the anode and the stainless steel hook. And as you can see I'm uh, getting enough voltage just to start the clock here. Now I'm going to push the uh, alligator clip down into the water so it's going to get wet as well and if you watch the voltage it falls off. Dry that off a bit. Touch the anode back in the water. Once again our voltage is back up. I'm going to take the aluminum wire and push it down so it also is in the, in the water and the voltage drops off with that. So what happens there is I've introduced different metals into the equation and they suppress the voltage down. We'll get into that a little bit further. As far as the, uh, the high voltage that you saw on the meter, I don't normally try to attain that for a fish. Usually 0.8 to around uh, 1 volt is where do I try to tune my lures at. First thing we'll look at is continuity of your lures. Uh, I have my test meter, I've set it on uh, 20 ohms. Most uh, test meters come with just the probes. For a couple of bucks you can buy a six pack of alligator clips, you just scrunch them down there with your pliers, a friction fit, and it works well. So continuity basically is that electricity can flow through or a dead short, whichever way you want to look at that. So my lures, I make them so that I go from end to end with continuity. More importantly, you want to have continuity from the anode into the, into the lure body and there I have a contact there so that's great. They do corrode so you have to give them a little scrub once in a while. Uh, chances are once they're in the water they're going to clean themselves and maintain a contact. Some lure bodies are clear coated. Mine are not simply because I wanted the uh, voltage to radiate from the lure body itself. And even my painted spoons are the same thing. Not to say that a uh, painted uh, insulated spoon won't work. If this was uh, a, a totally painted spoon, I would scratch off, if, if it wasn't already, scuff off the, the paint on that side of the ring and that side of the ring. Basically allows the voltage to go through, pass through under the paint, but at least come out onto the hook, because that's where you want the fish to eat. Now we'll look at a few different uh, variations of lures on this uh, soft bait perch. I know they've got continuity through there and through to the bottom post, so so that's great. And even though this is a dark colored hook, I believe it's uh, maybe a black knuckle because it has continuity on the surface. The one underneath, however, the treble is uh, clear coated. So there's no voltage going to radiate from this hook except for where the uh, clear coat has been removed. Also, check your uh, split rings. A lot of galvanized or zinc coated ones out there. Get rid of them, put stainless steel on there. And in this case, I would change that out to a stainless steel treble or a nickel plated treble as well. And that's going to give you. Uh, a nice uh, 
structure for uh, voltage to radiate from with an anode or an anode and a, on your clip on the front. Atomic plugs. I know from experience that these are a solid piece going right through them. So there again we have continuity right through to the hook. These have uh, brass body swivels so that's going to suppress the voltage down a little bit but it's uh, not necessarily detrimental. This has got a uh, salt water anode so that's the, uh, the lower voltage version. You could put a higher voltage one on this one and, and, uh, and try it. I've yet to find uh, the high end of voltage that I'll spook fish away. That's still in the works. Still lots to learn. What I've done in the past on uh, something like a Rapala is these have stainless steel posts in them. I've taken very fine stainless steel wire, run it along the edge of the body, epoxied it down, and interconnected all of them. So that gives you a, a nice length of, uh, of stainless steel for the uh, voltage to radiate from. And then you change out all your split rings and your, and your hooks to the appropriate uh, nickel or stainless steel. Stick an anode on the front and, uh, and Bob's your uncle. Jigs are very popular nowadays. Uh, this one uh, with a red coating on it uh, just so happens that it's uh, got continuity and it looks like it's uh, probably knuckle plated underneath there. The lead itself, if that's what's underneath there, is, uh, is, al is already coated so that's great. A perfect candidate for adding a little anode to it and getting a little bit of voltage. I've uh, downsize some of my anodes and uh, use uh, some flies with stainless steel hooks for rainbow trout and as you can see that's quite a small anode on there and he just sits there on top of the hook and uh, once again I don't like short lures with the anodes I prefer them to be spread out a little further but even this uh, side by side with identical lures uh, I was getting a 2 to 1 catch ratio which is about the same thing I found with my hotspot uh, apex lures. Put an anode on there. It is a brass bodied swivel once again and a, and a knuckle hook but uh, there was enough voltage there and, and once again that was uh, about 2 to 1 catch ratio. I do a little bit better than that with my uh, saltwater hoochies uh, simply because uh, of the mass of the, of the metal that's uh, on the hook and this is a stainless steel swivel on this guy and uh, for demonstration purposes I, I've added a second anode on there just to show that you can do it if you want to boost the voltage and I find that uh, as long as the lower portion is is large enough that uh, you'll get a about a 10 or 15 percent increase in the voltage by adding a second uh, anode to it You can also juice up some of your other hardware. Here's a, a lake troll. It's a piece of stainless steel wire and it's uh, the blades on it have some uh, brass coatings on them but uh, nothing ventured nothing gained. This obviously has has a break there from the front toe point so you'd have to add an anode onto there uh, a split ring and a, either a hot or a, or a colder anode and you can juice that up by itself. Uh, pickerel bottom bouncer. Uh, the lead is going to suppress the voltage down. You're going to want to uh, coat that, insulate it somehow. Uh, if you don't have uh, paint or clear coat or uh, rubberized coating, then uh, just a good dose of black tape on there. It's going to uh, keep it down to uh, a workable level. This one is equipped with a 100% uh, brass swivel. I would recommend getting rid of that and putting stainless hardware on there and then try a, a variety of uh, the anodes to, uh, to see which works best for you. This one's a little bit bigger. That's uh, a halibut uh, spreader bar. It's all stainless steel 
Uh, probably brass body swivels in there, but that's okay. Stick a couple of anodes on that and you're going to have uh, quite a large area of electrical field coming off of that. My original product was the uh, Downrigger electric field generator or portable black box. And uh, that's designed to go on uh, your uh, downriggers. And I basically designed it for users of braided downrigger line because everybody was getting away from the stainless steel wire. And that in itself will radiate a nice little field. Not as strong as the lures themselves, but it'll get the fish coming towards you before the lure gets there. So uh, uh, these are quite popular. A few things you're not going to be able to work with, uh, very well at least. Uh, some of them are the uh, spoons that, uh, that have copper or brass on them. Uh, copper and brass is higher on the galvanic scale than my uh, anodes are, but your voltage is going to be so low that uh, it may not make any difference. When you're uh, checking your uh, hooks, if you don't know if a hook is galvanized or, or zinc plated, my suggestion is you take a hook that you know exactly what it is. In this case I know this one is uh, nickel plated. This one, let's say I don't know what it is. There, we, there again I'm set on 2 volts DC. So I'm just going to drop these both in there. And I've got quite a high voltage difference between them. There's a nickel hook and a nickel hook. And after about 15 minutes, this would be down to zero. And the only reason it has a value right now is because I've shocked it with the voltage off of here. It's kind of like a magnet. If you touch it to a, uh, a tip of your screwdriver, that, sc that screwdriver becomes magnetized for a while. It's the same with the voltage. You end up with residual voltage in, uh, in your hooks when you're doing this. And it happens very quickly, as you can see. So after about 15 minutes, this would be down to a zero, if not before then, because that was a very short time. But that also proved to me that that hook has got a zinc coating on it. And it doesn't matter whether it's hooked onto a spoon or not. The only thing that matters is what's in the water. Here is a, a stainless hook and a nickel plated hook and there's going to be some differences there. Quite minimal. That's why they're compatible. They're very close together on the galvanic scale. I'll take a stainless steel hook. And one of these guys, and he's got some sort of a galvanized coating on there, and uh, we're going to jump. So that hook is basically an a nanode. It's the negative end of the scale. I turf every one of them off of my, my lures. I don't use them. So that's creating a positive charge on here, just like my anodes would. And I like to keep my anodes away from... Uh, my hooks uh, as much as possible simply because fish are repelled by a negative and attracted to a positive. That is well documented. As far as uh, voltage and how far it travels in the water, I initially set up a 30 foot test trough and when I tested it with salt water I found that the voltage drop on my lures over the whole 30 feet wasn't 5% Yet on the in the fresh water, which obviously doesn't have the mineral content, the voltage dropped about 30% for every 10 feet. So after 30 feet, the voltage was pretty minimal. Saying that, um, 
every lake is going to be different. It's all in the mineral content. So if you get a, a lake that's the brackish or a river that's brackish, then your voltage is going to going to be higher. So this is not an exact science. There's lots of variables, and it's just something you're going to have to play with. But uh, once you're in the ballpark, then uh, you should get some uh, production out of it. Other great advantages of having voltage two and lures is that the electricity doesn't care how brown the water is or how fast it's moving. If you're interested, have a look at my website. I have some other products, There's some mini plankton sockeye hoochies, all prepackaged, ready to go with the hooks, swivels, anodes, spring salmon or coho hoochies, basically the same thing. Portable black box, uh, two variations of that guy, as well as the anodes and the hardware. Here's some of the uh, trolling spoons that I have available on my website. They're all North American made, they're heavy quality. Uh, most of the components, as much as I could buy, North American. These are available in 3.5 as well as 4.0 sizes as well as fresh water or salt water variations. Anybody has any questions about uh, anything that they've seen on the video today? There are no stupid questions and I answer everybody. If we don't hear from you, good luck fishing. Thanks for watching.